Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time, and this week's topic is why you're not a profitable trader yet. I truly believe that most people can be profitable traders if they follow the right rules and the right path. And today we're going to talk about those rules and the right path you need to follow to be a profitable trader. I figure this time of the year is always a good time of the year for a lecture like this. Money management, trade management, psychology, building a trading plan, pre-trade checklist, not selling too soon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to talk about those topics today in this lecture, guys. Look, I do mean most people can be successful at this. But most people, unfortunately, aren't putting the time and the effort and the work required and necessary to be successful in it. And sadly, that seems to be the case in most angles and aspects of life. You see, it's like the gym thing every January. People are like, you know what? I want to go to the gym. I want to get in shape. And by February, March, they're not going to the gym anymore. You can't do that in trading. You can't just say, you know, I think I'll give this a few months. Uh-uh even a few years. If you're going to do this, do it. If you're not, don't even start because it'll be one of the most frustrating things that you've ever tried in your entire life. I promise you. Literally the most frustrating thing you've ever tried in your entire life if you're not going to put the time, effort, and work into this business. Okay? And that means two to three years. All right? And this lecture will help you get there. It's going to show you the process and what's required to be the best trader that you can be. And it will not happen overnight. I don't care what anybody says on Google. I don't care about those foo-roo gurus like, I turned $22 into $7 million. Get out of town. Okay, that's not the reality of this business. It's not the reality at all. And that's why the industry has a bad name. So watch this video. You will become a better trader because of it. If you like these videos, click that like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is why you're not a profitable trader yet, right? I truly believe that most people can be profitable traders if they put the time and effort into it and if they're willing to be honest and objective with themselves. And I know that sounds very simple, being honest and objective with yourself, but a lot of people are not. OK, um, they tend to lie to themselves. They tend to just say, oh, I'll fix that on Monday. Oh, it'll be better tomorrow. Uh, and they don't actually put the real time and work and effort into it. And let's be honest about this. OK, there are times you don't want to do things. That's that's not being lazy. All right. When you don't want to do something, it's called being human. But the disciplined, successful person does it anyway. They do it anyway. OK, there are plenty of times you wake up on the wrong side of the bed or you wake up and you're tired. You don't want to do this and you don't want to hit the gym today. You don't want to fill out your spreadsheet because you had a losing day, blah, blah, blah. That's that's being human. But you do it anyway. You do it anyway. So we're going to talk about some of the things that traders do um, that really hurt their chances of success. We're going to throw in some money management. We're going to talk about a little bit of trade management, a, a, a peek into psychology. Like it's a pretty broad based lecture on a lot of various different topics. And I figured, you know, we're getting closer to the end of the year now. It's a good time to do something like this so you can start the new year fresh and strong. Um, but before we do any of that, I've decided, you know, let's talk about when will the insanity stop. Um, this one actually I got a little while back um, and I thought I would just do a little bit of an update on it. That's all. A little bit of an update on this when will the insanity stop segment. So here is a person that said, hey, hope you're doing well. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. I wanted some advice. Hmm. Okay. I own 4,000 shares of CCL. I went ahead. I went away and neglected to place a stop loss. Neglected? To me, that just kind of basically says I purposely didn't place a stop loss, but whatever, however you want to justify it. You know, like I said, not being honest with yourself. I don't mind holding it. But when this starts to turn around, can you see any obvious resistance I have to watch out for? I'm in it at 24.35. There's so many problems with this, it's not even funny. Okay? One, you want advice. That's a problem. That's a problem. That means you don't have a plan. So the first thing I read is, 
I wanted some advice. You don't have a plan if you're asking for advice. Two, I went away and neglected to place a stop loss. That's code for I really had no intention on placing a stop loss. And three, I don't mind holding it. Which really confirms that you didn't actually have a stop loss to begin with. But when this starts to turn around, can you see any obvious resistance? This person has not, they're not even thinking about the downside. They haven't said or mentioned anywhere at any time what their stop loss is, how much money they're risking. Well, right now, they own 4,000 shares at $24.35. So let's just round it off. That's a $100,000 position. Let's just round it off. That's a $100,000 position. Okay? What? Wait for it. Wait for it. This was a year ago, Thanksgiving. That's when they got in. How's that going for you? You know, do I see any, quote, resistance above, you know, for, for when I'm winning on CCL? Well, what about if you're wrong and it never wins for you? What if it just goes against you forever? And that's what's happened so far, right? We're talking about, what, two years now? Two years this person has been in this position. Two years and they're still $6 below their entry, give or take, as of yesterday. So they're still $24,000 down on their position. And at one point, this stock got down to what? Six or $7? So your $100,000 position at one point in time was worth what? 30 grand? Holy shit. And it's still not a whole lot better. My point is, this is the definition of bag holding, right? Diamond hands, baby. GameStop, AMC, Bit. I mean, this is, this is bag holding. And man, that's what this person probably feels like. When is this thing going to come back? And nowhere in their email for, quote, advice, do they talk about what their stop loss should be. Bag holding 100 grand. You just hope at some point they get their money back two years what could that money have made during that time all right time to move on time to move on okay it has to come back and it maybe eventually will come back and maybe they'll go whoo three years later time value of money all because of a foolish decision you know okay all right Does it make it a good decision, Alexis? What if they have two billion to invest, Alexis? Is that a smart decision? Just give me a yes or no answer. Is what they did an intelligent thing to do? Yes or no? I'll wait for you. We'll sit here all day. Okay, that's all that matters. Making stupid decisions is all that matters. Because eventually, if you make enough of them, one of them bites you bad enough that it doesn't matter how much money you have, it hurts, right? It hurts, okay. BS trading mantra, you can't go broke taking profits. This is exactly how most traders do go broke. There's a reason this slide is in here. It's one of many reasons that traders fail. We're gonna talk a little bit about trade management, money management here in just a second. Because a lot of people literally think, oh, I'll just take the money. I'll just take the money. I see green, I take it. I see green, I take it. I see red, I let it go. I see green, I take it. I see red, I let it go. Okay, now, simulator trading is real. Another bullshit mantra. Hey, I'm up a $50,000 in my paper account. I'm like, hey, I've never met a losing paper trader. Cool story, bro. Right? Have met most of us at some point in time have been there. I get emails all the time from people. Oh, Jared, I'm killing it on my simulator account. I'm crushing it in paper. That's, that's great. I'm, I'm happy for you. That's, that's positive. Okay. But there's not a high correlation between success in paper trading and success in real trading. You're learning the patterns. You're learning how to press the button and use stop losses and market orders and stop limit orders. That's great. That's great. But there's no real correlation because the emotions aren't the same. The fills aren't the same. There's a lot of things that aren't the same. Okay. I agree. 100% win rate selling options on paper then get smoked when you go live. Mm -hmm. So trading is hard, period. Money slash trade management is everything. Those two things are everything. Without money management, you are not a trader, you're a gambler. 
without some form of consistent trade management, you're not a trader, you're a gambler. So you have to have these two things. If you don't have them, forget about it. Just walk away. Do something else for a living, okay? Simulators are not real. It's going to take a lot longer than you think to get good at this. A lot. Take the timeline you think it's going to take and then triple it. Don't double it. Triple it. You thought it was going to take six months, 18 months. You think it's going to take a year, it'll take three. You think it's going to take two, that one you might be able to double, okay? It takes a long time, okay? Shit happens along the way in your trading career. Getting filled isn't always easy. You get slippage and skippage. You have internet problems, frozen trading platforms, market servers slow down or go down, right? High frequency trading shakeouts, insane random news and tweets. Seriously, random stuff happens once in a while. I mean, we just saw like a $3 bar on NVIDIA today, kind of out of nowhere. That wasn't insane, not as crazy as some other things, but it just randomly popped and then just came all the way back down. Okay, that's odd. There's no holy grail, so have a plan. But the number one thing here is money and trade management are everything. So now I'm going to show you what I mean by this, okay? Now, some of you, Jordan, you've seen this before, um, but some of you have not. Most of you haven't, but a few of you have, okay? This is a good example and this is only three slides. I think there's like 25 slides in this, and we're only on slide seven. And we have like a we have a lot to cover today. Um, the next few slides are representative, in my experience, of the average trader, of most traders. And I include myself in that because I used to be in this position. I used to do the same stuff that that you're about to see. Okay. So let's take a look at it. All right, because we're going to focus first here on this money and trade management thing. So the plan is two are all or nothing. That's the plan, okay? That's what your plan says. And then you're comparing it against selling it too soon, you know, because you can't go broke taking profits, right? You, you just can't. You can't go broke taking profits. That's what they say. Bullshit, but it's, that's what they say. So if you took this trade here and you got in on this beautiful buy setup, and it is a pretty damn nice buy setup. I think most people would agree. You're getting in at 49.50, your stop's at 49.25, and you're like, damn, I caught this bad boy. Double bottom retest, minor price support, rising moving average, bottoming tail, narrow body bar, um, right probably at the trend line there, change of color bar, beauteous, just lovely. Got out for a 1R gain at 49.75, you made an R. So actual P&L, 500 bucks, your trading plan made 1,000. Followed the plan? No. What was the result? You were $500 behind, behind your trading plan. But you felt okay because you still made 500 bucks. You didn't feel great. You know you made a mistake, but you still like, yeah, I still got 500 bucks. I took a good trade. You know, you're finding all the good reasons to give yourself credit. And you're like, I just, I just need to work on that. And then you say to yourself, I'll fix it tomorrow. Right? Tell me I'm wrong. You sold too soon today. You're like, yeah, yeah, I'm bummed, but I'll get it. I'll, I'll get it right tomorrow. Okay. Trade two comes along. Get a little gap up, a little, a little pullback to a little bit of price support, rising moving average, bottoming tail, narrow body bar, uptrend, blah, blah, blah. Nice. Nice. You got a full 2R target, actual PL trading plan. Follow the plan. Results the same. What did I just say? You'll fix it tomorrow. And you did. And now you're like, I got this shit. Hold my beer. That's what you're thinking. You're like, I told you so. I told you. I'm not like everybody else, Jared. I told you. I'm different. You've never met anybody as motivated as me. I'm never quitting this business. Never giving up on this shit. It's my life. I hate my boss. I'm never quitting. Oh my gosh, I could have, I have more emails about that than I do when will the insanity stop segments. I do. I have thousands, not hundreds, thousands of emails that say just what I just said. You've never met me, Jared. I'm different. You've never met someone as motivated me. You don't understand. This has to work. Okay. So you're feeling all good. You're like, hey, I righted my wrong. I made a mistake on trade one, but I fixed it on trade two. I'm good. Okay, sweet. Time to go to trade three, right? Failed breakout, right? Full stop out with slippage, lost 1.2R. That little shakeout, oh, that hurt. Just a little bit of slip slip, right? Get in at 19 bucks, pop up, oof. Actual P&L, 600, 
trading plan, minus 600. Did you follow your plan? Yep. So good. Two trades in a row. It, it wasn't fun. You took some slippage, but you followed your plan. Okay. Next trade. Get another little breakout over here. Breakout exited for a half hour gain. It was just too choppy. It was just too choppy, right? It bounced, pulled back, it bounced, it pulled back. You just finally got tired of it. You're like, you know what? It's a breakout. It just didn't go. Except the fact that it, it did. That's the problem. You got $250 a half hour. Your trading plan made a $1,000. Followed your plan? Nope. But, but, but it just didn't look good, Jared. So I, that's why I got out of it. I mean, breakout's a hit and run pattern. And if they don't go, I, I just, I just get out of them. Is it written in your plan? No, it's not. Are you a 2R all or nothing trader or are you not? Uh, I, I, I am. I am. But Jared, this thing looked terrible. Are you an all or nothing trader or not? I am. Did you break your plan or not? I did. Okay, let's move on. This is how people justify things. It just wasn't looking good. It wasn't looking good. I know I'm an all or nothing trader, but look, it just wasn't looking good. And the last time that happened, it, it stopped out. So I'm saving myself an R. Okay. And it works. Trade five. You get in this little three bar play up here, wide bar, narrow bar, peekaboo's up, comes back down, stops out. Three bar play, full stop out, minus one R, actual, minus one R, trading plan, minus one R, follows your plan. Okay. Back to the good stuff. Next one, three bar play to the downside. Triggers, goes against you and stops out. Minus one R, minus one R. Wow, okay. So you're thinking to yourself, three trades, sorry, six trades, three you followed your plan, three you broke your plan, right? Pretty much. I mean, you broke your plan on the first trade, trade number one, okay? Then you broke your plan on trade number four. So actually, you followed your plan 66% of the time, okay? 66% of the time you followed your plan. Not bad, you're thinking. Okay, but here's the problem. All right, here's the problem. See, this is your actual, this is your trading plan, okay? And you're thinking to yourself, it's not the end of the world. Because you made $150, which wasn't ideal, but your trading plan made $1,400. You were what? two and a half R behind your plan on only six trades. Guys, where am I going with this? I'm not even getting to the big stuff yet. Two out of six trades, only one third, 33% of those trades you broke your plan on. And on six trades, it cost you two and a half R. Now, your batting average actual was 50%. Your batting average trading plan, 50%. Your batting average is identical. It didn't change. So when you stopped, you stopped. That wasn't the problem. It was when you won. That was the problem. Your winners were the problem. Your losers weren't the issue. Does this sounding familiar to anybody? It's like, wait, wait, wait. I take full advantage of my stopouts. It's the winners that I cut a leg off too soon. I cut short. And you don't think it's a big deal. Until you look at the numbers and you're like, it's two and a half R on six trades. And then you're like, wait, multiply this by 10. That's 60 trades. That's called, call it one month of trading. It's $1,500 versus $14,000. Now, I'm not trying to say that every six trades will be exactly like this. It's not what I'm saying. Obviously, sometimes you'll break your plan and it will help you sometimes. But in the long run, it will cost you more money than it saves you. It's the reason it's your plan, because it works. But if you don't follow it, it means nothing. And over the course of a month, that's a big difference. And I always tell people the same thing. It's the difference between keeping your job and quitting your job. That's what the 1500 to 14,000 is. It's the difference between keeping your job and quitting your job. Now again, I don't expect all 54 other trades to be identical to this. They won't. But the concept is what I'm going for. You take full advantage of the loss and a partial advantage of the winner. And it's going to hurt you in the long run. This is acceptable. 50% with a 1.87 win-loss ratio. That's nice. That'll get you places. This, 
This is break even trader status right there. That that's what that is. 50% with a one uh, win loss ratio is a little up, little down, little up, little down. That's what that is. Okay. Now take it one step further. We're gonna keep going. I'm gonna drill this bad boy home. How expensive is breaking your plan and selling too soon? Well, 20 trading days a month, three trades a day, 60 trades a month, 12 months a year, 60 trades a month, 720 trades per year. Now again, I know, I know you cannot extrapolate exact data from this analogy. I get it, but you can understand where I'm going, the analogy part of it, okay? It's the concept I'm after. Minus 1,250 versus your plan for every six trades is how much over 720 trades? It's $150,000. Still think you can't go broke taking profits. Batting average didn't change at all. Identical 50%. It's crazy. Crazy. Give it some thought. That's the difference between controlling your own future and someone else controlling your future. And it looks like this. It looks like this. 60 trades per month for one year, 50% batting average, win-loss ratio 1.09 versus 1.875. Does it make a difference? $168,000 following your plan, $18,000 breaking your plan. So you got to go back and ask yourself, what are you doing? Because from what we have seen in this particular analogy, your plan works. Oh my gosh, it's one of the hardest things to do in trading is actually get a plan that works. And you finally found, quote, the holy grail, a plan that works. And then what do you do? You F with it. You mess with it. You screw with it. Something that literally is the path to financial freedom. And you're like, no, I think I'll go the other way. Why? Right? Psychology, emotion, ego, need to be right. Fear of loss is stronger than your hope for greed. Yes, 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 yes. And it all starts between the two ears in your head. And this is why I tell people, find a consequence system that's nasty, severe, and ugly. Something so bad that you'll never break your plan and then have someone hold you accountable to it because this is what your life is going to be like. Guys, th this was, this was me. I used to go back and, and I know you've all, not all, but many of you have been there and you, you tell us a friend, a spouse, a brother, a sister, a parent, whoever, and you're like, if I just followed my plan and stopped selling too soon, I'd be making a couple hundred grand. And then they look at you like deer in the headlights, cross-eyed and go, well, why don't you just follow your plan then? And they're looking around like, they're looking around, not you. They're like, am I missing something? Did, is there a part of that conversation that he, he failed to tell me? If I just followed my plan, I'd make a couple hundred grand a year. They look at you and they're like, what are you, are you dumb or something? If it's written down, just go follow it. Like if the coach says do 20 burpees, you do 20 burpees. Why, why are you doing 10 burpees? I know we're all thinking the same thing, aren't we? Because then your excuse is it's just not that easy. You're not a trader, right? Tell me you haven't said that. Yeah, but it's just, it, I know, I know I'm not stupid, mom. You don't understand. You're not a trader. And you sit there and you just laugh. You walk away and you laugh and you're like, did I really just say that? Yes, you did. And you looked and sounded like an idiot because you are an idiot because your actions speak louder than your words and your actions suggest you do stupid shit. Okay? It's craziness. It's insanity is what it is. And yet so many traders do this. And it's the reason they're not profitable. Now, on the same line of thinking, know thyself and know your management. Part of having a successful trading plan that's followable, is that even a word, followable? Okay, I just created a new word, all right? 
If your plan meets your personality style, it's much easier to follow, right? Goal attaining versus profit protecting. You can't have both. I mean, you can, but it's rare to be able to consistently have both, right? The tighter you manage, the more profit you are protecting, but you also have a greater chance of being stopped out at that particular level or trailed out, stopped or trailed out. The looser you manage, the larger the target you will reach. However, you will protect less and potentially give back some gains. You can't reach a 5R goal and lock it at 1R. Sure, it happens from time to time, but that's not going to be common. If you want that large target, wiggle room is the word of the day. You have to give them room. If you don't want to give them room, then you need to figure out a different approach, a different strategy that still makes money. I don't care if you manage tighter, just understand you're not going to see four and five R targets very often, or even two and three R targets very often. Okay? Followable. There it is. Oh, they really? They stole my word? Comparative, more followable, superlative, most followable, able to be followed. Look at that. Someone stole my word clip. Anyway, hence, Management is always a give and take. And management is always about expectation. If you get into a trade with the wrong expectation, you will likely have a bad result. You have to understand what it is you're doing. Why? Because they go hand in hand. You can't, for example, have a tight management and a low batting average. You won't make money. You won't do it. If you're shooting for 1R targets and you bat 37%, good luck. At the same time, you cannot expect to get 5R targets and bat 75%. It's not likely going to happen. Every once in a while, you know, we, we beat the odds. And for a period of time, we, we do very well. And then reversion to the mean comes in and we go back to our normal selves. Okay. Goal attaining versus profit protecting. Big part of this, know thyself, know the expectation. Lots of ways to get to the same place. A lot of ways to skin a cat. A lot of ways to get to the same thing. At the top here, we have a 40% batting average. Most of you would say isn't very good. But if you have a 2.75 win-loss ratio, that's pretty good, right? Four winners, 11 are in gains. Six losers, 6R in losses. Net, after 10 trades, you'd make 5R. On 60 trades, that's 30R. Oh my gosh, you go down, 50% batting average. Oh my gosh, 30R. 60% batting average, 1.5 win-loss ratio, 30R, right? 70% batting average, 1.15 win-loss ratio, guess what? 30R, right? 30R on all of these from a 40 to a 70% batting average, okay? Point... You don't have to do it the same way as your neighbor. Not everybody does it the same way. And you don't have to shoot for 30R either. I know traders that are happy to get 10R, but they're consistently at 10R and they just raise their risk. They're not even trying for 30R. I know some traders that like to take 100 trades a month. Now, some traders that like to take Ollie, <clears throat> two trades a month. I'm kidding on that. But on a serious note, some traders like to take 20 trades a month. Everyone in between, different management approaches, different patterns they take, different times of day that they trade, different number of trades they take. You don't have to fit in the same box as your neighbor, right? This isn't the left. You don't have to sit in the same box. They don't have to put everybody in the same box. We can be different. It's okay. And you can do it in various ways. 30% batting averages, 80%, 90% batting averages. But you have to know the expectations. You have to know the expectations. If you don't, then a 40% batting average with one R target is not going to work. If you don't know the expectation. Different approaches. For example, pivots, bar by bar. Pivots are nice. And they're going to get you to some pretty big, healthy targets, especially in a stock that's power trending. 
But, but, if you're in a choppier market, pivots might struggle. See where I'm going? Like, my point is, is that regardless of the management approach that you choose, there will be circumstances, times, environments in the market that won't be super conducive to your style of management. When we're in a power trend market, pivots are awesome. If you have a stock on its own page, it's ignoring the market, pivots are awesome. If you're in a choppier market, bar by bar, it's probably gonna be a little better. You know the markets where it literally goes up for 20, 30 minutes in the morning from 9.30 to 10, and then it does a 100% retracement or 120% retracement, then bounces 50%, those markets pivot struggle in. Bar by bar does better, but you're not getting home runs with bar by bar. Not frequently anyway. You're just gonna move that stop up, move that stop up, move that stop up, move that. Now, could you combine the approach? Of course you could. But that's where learning the expectation is. Some people say, all right, I'm gonna do bar by bar to start the trade so I can lock in some profits on one third or half. Then I'm gonna do pivots for the back half and get the big move. Some people pick a target and say, well, I want a $2 target. And when they get to 80% or 90% of the target, then they switch to bar by bar. There's a lot of different ways, but you just have to understand what the expectation of it is. Because if you don't understand that using pivots is going to not protect a lot of money, right? I mean, this stock could be up 3R right here at the top. And every once in a while, one's going to come all the way back against you, all the way back. And if you didn't recognize that was a possibility, you're going to have a hard time in trading. Pivot versus bar by bar. You guys have seen this slide. First target, second target. Why? There's the pivot to the left. There's the, another pivot to the left. So say you get in right down here, right? Right there. You could add right here, add right here. But imagine you get in right down there and your stop loss is here. Maybe you put it a little lower. The initial management is five minute pivot, 75% to target change to five minute bar by bar. Okay. This is a five minute chart. Okay. So you get in here, but we're not anywhere close to that 8150 target, right? We're down in here at like, I don't know, 7925. Okay. So you're looking at a target that's $2 and 25 cents away. Big target too, because this is probably only a 50 cent stop loss. So that's like a four and a half to our target. Anyway, stock moves up, continues higher. Now you're getting into the area where you might consider that 81 area, you're getting close. Is it 75%? You have to do the math on it. Pulls back, bounces, and now you're getting into that bar by bar area, right? So this is someone's using a combination. It's like, well, I want the bigger target. So I know I have to be flexible in the beginning of the trade. But as I get close, I want to lock some in. Why? Well, at the beginning of the trade, you don't have any money to lock in. Right? You're not really locking anything if you start the bar by bar too soon. It defeats the purpose of trying to get 4R. Now, if you're someone who's like, look, I'm just looking to scalp this thing for like an R, you could do bar by bar right off the start probably, right? Because this thing gives you an R basically in the first couple bars. But the other person saying, I, I, don't, I want the big move. I feel so good about this triple bottom. I want three, four, five R out of it, you know? It just depends on what your expectation is. Here's another example. Daily chart. Gapping over two red bars, right? We kind of need to be over that like 1725 area right there. Okay. Right there. And we have room to 18 bucks. So like 1710 to $18. That's it. Okay. Over here, it's not really a three bar play. But it's like an engulfing bar, right? You had a green bar. And this, remember, the tail, that bar was red. Completely red at one point. A battle was fought. Buyers won the battle. You buy at 1715, stop 1680. Then you begin your three minute bar by bar as you get close to target. That's a combination approach. Or, or you might sell some half at 
one arm. Then start a combination approach. Guys, there's a million ways to do this. We could be here for 10 hours talking about different managements. I mean, you track 15, Antoine, you could track 115. I try to only track patterns that I know I can follow, not patterns, management strategies that I know I can follow. Look, I'm not gonna track 5RL or nothing. I know it's not happening for me. It's just not, it's not realistic for me, okay? When you're new, you won't know that as well. What about breakouts and three bar play management? Same idea, same concept, right? You get in right here at 938, stop right there, there's your daily chart. Maybe you get back in, maybe you don't. The point is, whatever management you choose or decide to use, you need to do it every single time. Not half-ass it. We saw earlier, and I'll go back to it to refresh your memory. You only broke your plan twice. And it cost you two and a half R. And if you consistently break your plan, it's going to cost you your career in trading. And you're going to be working for that job or that boss for a lot longer than you want. All because you couldn't sort out the mental aspect of trading. Most traders, not all, but most traders know what the right thing to do is. They just can't bring themselves to do it because there's no one requiring it of them. There's no one forcing it upon them. True or false? I mean, you don't have to answer, it's rhetorical. But do you guys think, in your opinion, that you would do these things if you were doing this for a company? Think about it. Do you think you would do these things if you did it for a company? You know, like you go and work for a company and you, live, you work in a cubicle and you have an Excel spreadsheet. And the boss says, da, 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 da. well, you do the Excel spreadsheet. Well, if the boss came in and said, target's $10, that's it. CEO just called, said, hey, target's $10. All or nothing. We're either out at eight or out at 10. You're going to sit there and just laugh, Okay. <laughs> I got the easiest job in the world. Are you shitting me? Wait, you mean to tell me that I can just set a bracket to exit at 10 or exit at 8? Yeah, okay, cool. So wait, you're also telling me that I can just leave for the day and come back at 345? Wait, let me get that straight. Could, boss, could, come, come back here for a second. So you're telling me that I can set my order to sell at 10 and we make money for the company. And I can also set my order to sell at eight as a stop out. And for the literally the rest of the day, I can just leave. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. But you got to close the position before four o'clock. That's the only other caveat. Okay. Yeah, I'll see you at 345. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too, buddy. That's it. Now, some of you guys are like, ha ha, Jerry, that's funny, not funny. No, it's hilarious because you're an idiot. You would do it for someone else, but you wouldn't do it for yourself? Are you dumb? Stupid? You would do it for someone else for like 10% of the profits, 5% of the profits, 1% of the profits, but you won't do it for yourself for 100% of the profits. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. And you got it, you're sitting there going, eh, it's kind of right, you know, he kind of is right. Why do I do what I do? Because a boss isn't forcing you not to do it. That's all. It's the only reason. It's the only reason. You all show up for work on time, don't you? Why? Because my boss told me to. And if I don't, they'll fire me. You guys have heard me say it. I'll say it for the nine millionth time. Forrest Gump. Why'd you put that rifle together so fast? Because you told me to, Drill Sergeant. Literally, 
because you told me to, drill sergeant, but you won't do it for yourself. Stupid is as stupid does. And we act very stupid sometimes in trading. Very, very, very stupid. And yet, everyone thinks they can be their own boss. Everyone believes, I hate my boss. He's an idiot. She's an idiot. They're an idiot. They do. People say this shit all the time. Oh, my boss is as dumb as they come. I don't know how I got the job. I don't know how she got the job. What? So you should be the boss. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm way more qualified than she is. Uh, okay. But yet, left on your own devices in trading doesn't look like that, does it? It's crazy. So, O-N-O-N. Nice gap over a red bar, over a pivot, over another pivot. Like level one type gap, very close. If you consider that a wide range bar, that's tough. But gap here, gap here. Nice little three bar play with a little mini shakeout. Okay. Three bar play with a little bottoming tail. Okay. Do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. Get in a 4046, stops 3970, it's a $5,000 trade. Straight up, like painless straight up. One, two, three, four, five bar straight. Ooh, guys, it went $5.50. $5.50 on a 75 cent stop. That's pretty good. Like six or seven to one, something like that. Because you do what you're supposed to do. You take the pattern. A lot of you guys are good at taking the pattern. You're good at recognizing the entry and the stop. It's just in between you mess it up. Or, or, or you break your plan and then what happens? You break it to the point where the next trade messes with your head. You break it to the point where then you go on tilt, slight tilt. Not full tilt, just mini tilt. And you lose 4R that day. That's mini tilt. Full tilt is when you bag hold. Like the guy who owns CCL and you know, you're down $70,000. That's bag holding. But mini tilt is when you take a trade. Doesn't go the way you thought. Or something crazy happens, HFT. And then it affects the rest of your trades for the rest of the day. Or you have a really bad day. And the next day you come in and you go, I got to get my money back. Got to get my money back. Right? I want you to give it some thought because most people, you know, we go all the way back. Why you're not a profitable trader yet for most people derives, it's a derivative of not following your plan or not having a plan. Either don't have one or don't follow it. Don't have one or don't follow it. Don't have one or don't follow it. Don't follow it. Not following it isn't just management. It simply could mean taking more trades than your plan said. It could simply mean risking more money than your plan said. It could simply mean taking a pattern that's not in your plan. It could simply mean not going through your pre-trade checklist before you take a trade. It could mean a lot of things. But... All of those things matter to your trading. All of them matter. Right? Go back to here. They all matter. Money management, trade managers, everything. It's going to take longer than you think. And there's a lot of garbage and crap that happens in this business. But if you stick to good trades, good patterns, good things happen. Good trades, good patterns, good management, good things happen. Good patterns good management, good results, good patterns, good management, good results, good patterns, good management, good results. And for some reason, you'd rather do a thousand burpees, 2000 burpees, right? Yaroslav, for some reason, you can't do it. And the worst part is you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for somebody else. That's the part for me that I sit and I meditate on at times. I do. I honestly sit down and think, what is it about the human psyche that allows us to so easily, without question, follow someone else's requirements or someone else's rules, like a boss, but yet for ourselves, we won't do it. 
It's the same reason we're good at dispensing advice to others, but not actually doing it ourselves. It's crazy. Is it though, Sophia? Right? Like somebody's saying it feels like less risk. But is it? When you think about it. Is it less risk? It's your life we're talking about. Right? We're literally talking about your entire lifestyle. So sure, a company's willing to guarantee you a paycheck if you show up. But now, when you do it for yourself, you're not guaranteed the paycheck, but the upside's freedom. Freedom's a pretty big motivator for me. Right? I mean, it's a big motivator. I look around and pinch myself and go, this is insane. How do I have this much freedom in life? How am I able to do just about what I want to do when I want to do it? Because you showed the discipline required to get to that point. And the beauty of it is no one can take it from you when you get there. You see, no matter how high up a company you go, they can still take it from you. Right? If you're the CEO, they can still take it away from you. Steve Jobs got fired, for goodness sakes. Steve Jobs got fired. They can take it from you. Now, maybe that's a great analogy and a terrible analogy. It's great because it shows no matter how gifted you are, you can be fired. It's a terrible analogy because, well, he ended up doing really well. But you understand the analogy. I want you to think about how important it is to you. Because building someone else's dream is not the same as building yours. Build yours first, then go out and help other people build theirs. Let me repeat that. Build yours first and then help other people. If you can do both at the same time, then wonderful. Wonderful. More power to you. If you can do both at the same time, great. But you come first. You are numero uno. You are number one. It's like when you're in an airplane, put your mask on first before you help someone else. Put your oxygen on first before you help somebody else. You're right, Sophia. People don't think it can happen for them. And that's why self-help books, Tony Robbins, Oprah, blah, 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 are so popular. Because people are generally have a negative attitude towards success, whether or not they can do it. I can tell you this. It only takes one. You can fail 10 times, but the 11th time is all it takes. It's easy to find another job. There's plenty of jobs out there. But there's not a lot of freedom out there. For me, I'll search to the end of the earth to find that. Because there's always a job waiting for you around the corner. Always. So, you're either going to put in the hard work for yourself and change your life. Or you're going to put in the hard work for someone else and change their life. That's really what it comes down to. You know that, that saying or that phrase like, hey, thanks for all your hard work this year. You know, keep doing it so the boss can buy another Ferrari next year. How about buying one for yourself? How about just some freedom and flexibility for yourself? How about that? You get back into trading, you sell too soon. You're, all you're doing is hurting your future. That's all you're doing. You're going to be frustrated with yourself, disappointed with yourself. The flip side is following your rules and your plan. Every once in a while, you'll be frustrated, but most of the time, you'll be happy that you're doing the right thing at the right time, and the result will show it. So, do you want to know you left money on the table? Knowing you produce good trades that have good results, but you're not able to see the money from it? It's like giving someone else advice. They take your advice and become a millionaire, and you sit there and go, why didn't I take my own advice? Because you didn't have the stones. You know, and unfortunately, it leads to this, the eventual failure of your business. If you continue this process long enough, three things will happen. You'll draw down your account to critical levels and you'll be forced to quit. You will quit out of frustration and join the legions of failed traders with all the excuses for why it didn't work. Or you'll hit, quote, the wall and finally begin the challenging process of change. Those are really the three things that happen. You will be one of these three. Almost guaranteed, 99.9% of you, one of these three things. You'll draw down your account and you'll just be forced to quit. 
you'll just quit out of frustration and say, oh, trading's not for me. Ah, oh, traders are just gamblers. Or you'll finally mentally hit the wall and be like, you know what? I got to get my shit together and I'm going to change. I'm going to be better. For those of you from Philadelphia, many of you don't remember this because it was a long time ago now. They had a saying called trust the process, right? Back when Sam Hinkie was there and they were literally losing on purpose, literally losing on purpose to get top three draft picks. And it was called the process. Trust the process. They were gaming the system. And the end... NBA got so pissed off that they basically orchestrated firing Sam Hinkie because they didn't want people gaming a broken system. You can be your own system in trading if you trust the process because no one can take it from you. Isn't that the beauty of it? You go out there and you proudly work for somebody else while you're working on your dreams on the side. And then eventually you proudly quit that job and work for yourself exclusively forever. Sounds like a plan to me. Give it some thought. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be selling too soon and being frustrated and realizing that possibly, potentially, you could be making the money you want to make? Or be frustrated by making a 10th of the money you should be making. Because 20% of the time, 30% of the time you break your plan and it makes a massive difference on your, B, your P&L, your bottom line. And on top of that, the heck just happened, there it is. And my point I'm getting at is you have a choice. You have a choice. Not anyone else, not your boss, not your spouse, not your kids, not your friends, you. Why owe you? What do you want to do with this opportunity? Do you want to manage properly? Do you want to follow your pre-trade checklist? Do you want to follow your trading plan? Do you want to do this right, risking $5 per trade when you start and building your way up to $500, $1,000, $5,000, $50,000 risk? Or do you want to just keep working for someone else forever and talking about one day, someday, right? Was it The Rock a few months back was very popular for saying one day or day one? Which is it? One day or day one? Which one are you going to be? Because right now, while I might be slapping you a little bit, it's still a feel-good lecture. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it work. Then the market just bends you over tomorrow and beats the shit out of you. And you lose four in a row. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, I can't do this. And you go, what happened to yesterday? Well, today's different. You're going to get punched. You're going to get knocked down in, in trading. The market's no joke. The market's going to mess with you going to do some nasty things to you how many times you get back up that's it it's all that matters how many times you can keep getting back up that's just life every successful person's been knocked down every single one of them it's rare it's super rare the mark zuckerbergs of the world where you start a business steal somebody's idea and in five years are a billionaire those are like unicorns even in the billionaire world that's a unicorn billionaire Almost everybody else had to go through some shit. A bankruptcy, losing everything, risking it all on the line, and then making it. The beauty about trading is you don't have to do any of those things. It's just a slow, systematic process to success. Some will get it sooner, some will get it later, but you don't have to ever give up on it. Find a way to pay your bills in the background while you're working towards your dream. And a lot of that is making sure you have a proper trading plan with good money management and good trading management and following it. And a big part of that is having a proper consequence system. A proper consequence system. Okay? So, with that, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about how to be a better trader. Hopefully you'll think a little bit more about why you're selling too soon. 
You'll think a little bit more about the expectations you have for your trades and if they match your personality and your trading objectives. And then if they don't, you'll make some adjustments. And if they do, then you'll just simply say, hey, I need a bigger consequence system because for some reason, the one I have now isn't enough. When you do a thousand burpees and then you're like, yeah, I got to do it again. That's 2000 burpees. Something's not strong enough by your consequence system. If you'd hold till $10 for your boss, then a thousand burpees isn't enough. I'm using that because that's somebody's consequence system. They've broken it twice. It's not strong enough. It's just not. Give it some thought about what it would take to keep you and put you on the straight and narrow. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.